today, the topic is self-image. Um, and I wanted to talk about that in relation to the people around us. Um, this past week was pretty tough. Um, I had finals, but even more than just having finals um, was I had a battle with insecurities again. Um, mind you, I will say that I definitely defeated it. I defeated insecurities back in August, really. Um, like if you go back to the to episode nine, the criteria, um, I talk about my entire revelation and stuff like that. So I, I feel good. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I, I, I'm in a better place. But just because you beat something at some point in your life does not mean that the devil can not try and bring that back to try and stir you up again. Um, but do understand that when those feelings come back, when that energy comes back, when that, you know, those evil things start to come back, understand that that doesn't mean that you have had no growth. You know, there's, there's no amount of growth that you can go in the world like that you can have in the world where devil is just going to stop trying you. He's always going to try you. He tried Jesus Christ. So do understand that just because you find yourself battling things that you feel like you should have beaten in the past already does not mean that, you know, like you you never made that growth in the first place. No, the devil is just trying to see if it still works. So show him that it doesn't work anymore. It's very hard to be confident about who you are. Let, let's admit it. It's very hard to be confident about who you are um, when people don't treat you like who you believe that you are. It, it, I mean, it's. We, we love to act like we don't care about what people think, but every last one of us care about what people think. If you own a social media account, there's one little part of you at the very least that cares about what people think. And it's really hard for us to love ourselves when we do not feel love from other people. It's just the way it is. We have to train ourselves to be able to operate without other people's affirmations. You are not consistent. Human beings are not consistent. One moment we could be super positive, one moment we could be super negative. Understand that I don't want to give the power to somebody else, depending on the type of day that they're having, depending on what they just went through. They're going to now project whatever perception that they want to project onto me, and I'm going to feel that way? Nah, that's not going to happen no more. A lot of us are waiting to, to feel like us. We're waiting on other people to say that we are in order to be, but that's not the case. That's not the case. Um, I think growing up, I think for half of my life, majority of the things that I would do were to impress other people or somehow to get attention from other people because ultimately young Emmanuel needed that attention just to know that I was something. It's crazy because deep down, I feel like I always believed that I was something, right? I, I, I feel like I always believed that I was something. Something was in there. Something was great about me. But when I thought, you know, on a more superficial level, I mean, like, I look at the way people treated me, um, the way people looked at me or didn't look at me or didn't notice me or the lack of likes or views or whatever. And I would think like, oh, well, people don't care about me as much as they care about the next guy. Or people don't acknowledge me as a mistake, acknowledge him. So am I really every, every like, am I really that great if nobody acknowledges me the way I feel like they need to acknowledge me? Or when somebody treats me wrong, am I really that great? Because if I was that great, they wouldn't be treating me like this. That was my thought process. Um, and ultimately, I started thinking and, 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 and forming my self-image from the outside in. When I say the outside in, that means that... It's not that I am, you know, I believe in my greatness, so my greatness just automatically shows, my confidence automatically shows. That's thinking from the inside out, right? But instead, I was thinking from the outside in. Yeah, deep down, I thought I was great, but ultimately, I didn't think that I was truly great until people started paying attention to me, because that's supposed to be an indicator, right? I mean, look at all the famous people. They, you know, they're famous because people pay attention to them, or they're famous because people love them. Or not even famous people, just that popular kid. Like, they're where they're at, and you can tell who they are because of how other people treat them, right? We think from the outside in, we're leaning on our own understanding, right? But that's a dangerous way to live. We're going to go to the scripture. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. I have one verse, um, and we're just going to talk about that. We're going to... Um, 
go dive deep into this verse and expand it and relate it to our lives. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. This is Jesus speaking. It says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. May God bless your hearing and understanding of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample under their feet. Uh, I, I, I came across this verse like a, like a month ago. And I think it completely changed my perspective on life. This is coming from a human being who would literally depend on other people's affirmation. I wasn't Emmanuel until this person thought I was really cool or this person thought I was really funny or this person liked me or this person, you know, was attracted to me or whatever. Waiting on the, the, the proper treatment of other people in order to be me. But what this verse acknowledges, I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, anything like I'm not talking about the literal throwing holy, sacred things like throwing a Bible to a dog and they, you know, tear it apart. No, I just like this verse because it highlights a concept that there can be something that is holy that is misused. There can be something that is so awesome. Whose value cannot be identified. By something. Therefore, misused by something. I believe that this relates to a lot of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can be that holy object. We can be that awesome object. We can be that talented object. But there can be that dog or that swine. And I'm not here to call people dogs or swine, but it's just to paint the analogy. There can be that dog. There can be that swine. There could be that terrible person. That, or that person just having a very bad day who does not see your value. Therefore, treats you like trash, tramples over you, tears you apart. But did it change the fact that this item was holy? No, the item was holy. It was deemed holy in this in this in this scripture, that item, whatever it is, whatever, it, you know, the pearls or whatever. It's holy. It's awesome. It's perfect. It's great. It's talented. It has purpose. It has identity. But when you allow something, someone that has the incapability of actually understanding its worth then it will tear it apart just because you're holy does not mean that the dog can't tear you apart just because you're a good person doesn't mean that everyone will like you just because you're a winner does not mean that you won't take L's does not mean that people will not call you a loser this outside world, when we think from the outside in, the devil operates with this outside world. He wants to use the things that you can see, that you can hear, that you can taste, that you can feel, that you can smell. So then it contradicts how you actually feel about yourself, the experiences, the people, the situations. He wants to change how you feel about yourself. He doesn't want you to believe that you're great. By all means, I'm not saying affirmation is bad. I'm not saying compliments are bad. But you never want to live a life based on compliments. You never want to build your confidence based on compliments. Your confidence needs to be built on your knowing of who God created you to be. Because one day you'll like what you see in the mirror. The other day you will not like what you see. But if you are convinced in your mind and in your heart that you are who God created you to be and that he and when you are who you are, you're not going to miss anything, miss any opportunities that God has literally made for you to walk through. When you realize that who you are is not dependent on how you feel about the person in the mirror today or how people treat you you take the power back as a being with identity with purpose 
Stop looking for affirmation from the compliments. Stop looking for affirmation from other people because one day they'll give you all the praise. The next day they'll try to kill you. Jesus was the son of is the son of God, but he was not treated like the son of God. They treated him like a criminal. They killed him like a criminal. If you continue to wait on people to treat you like you think they need to treat you in order to be you, you are going to miss out on life. You're going to miss out on your purpose. This is not about other people. This is about you. It's self-image. You either choose self positive self-image or you choose self-deprecation. But you do have the choice. Mm-hmm.